All right, folks, welcome back to Art for OUR's YouTube channel. This is Dan Priest, your garage midnight lurking soul. Um, this was an interesting project. It took a turn I did not expect, and it turned out to be better than I expected. Which is kind of the theme of my projects, let's be honest. My um, inspiration for this one came from different stained glass things I'd seen, uh, some patterns on gates that I'd walked past, so it's hard to give people the appropriate um, credits. I don't know who the, the artists were that designed these things, but it's kind of a, an attempt at stained glass, but not really, just it was the inspiration for it. Um, this was a piece of cherry wood that my brother-in-law Chris donated a while back. It finally dried out well enough to be of use. It had some beautiful grain to it. Because of my plans for this design, I didn't worry too much about the big cracks because I knew I'd be excavating the vast majority of the wood. It didn't have a super beautiful grain, so I wasn't too worried about that either, but I didn't want a really soft wood. I need something that had a little beef to it so I could hold up to what I was going to do to it. So one of the uh, things I wanted to try that was different on this project than I've done on anything else is I wanted to have graduated colors, uh, different shades of blue. And normally the way I do it, I pour the whole thing so at once, and so it's gonna be one solid color. So to make every little window a different color blue, I needed some quick setting resin. So I thought I would experiment with some uh, UV setting resin. And it worked and it didn't work. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't do a ton of research on this before, but the brand I used I, I'm not even sure what the brand is. It's kind of a no-name knockoff on Amazon. But under the UV light, it's set up you know, two or three millimeters thick. And maybe that's normal for UV resin. I don't know. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't set super thick. So I didn't capture the different shades of blue that I was hoping for as well. I still got it, but it wasn't, wasn't as dramatic as I was hoping. Uh, the other problem was is I was pouring it a centimeter or two thick at times and the 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 instructions that came with it said that it could set up to a centimeter so I was hoping to get at least a centimeter thick shelf anyway that didn't happen and the underside was super gooey which was fine but it made for finishing the inside super super challenging as you will see Big thank you to one of our partners, uh, Trumi. It's a smartphone for kids and teenagers. It's uh, a company that's aiming to take, take out Gab, um, or at least to compete with them. And they're they've been doing well. It started it started by my company, my, my I'm sorry, my brother. And um, I love the options they provide for kids to help keep them safe from pornography and uh, unwanted adult interactions online. Uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, the kids get into trouble. Um, anyway, they offer a discount on the phone if you use our codes that are in the description of the video. And they they it produces a, um, a donation to Operation Underground Railroad as well, so it's a great partnership. I think they're up to 13,000 subscribers, started from nothing a year ago, and it's been growing. We uh, finished off the year quite strong with Art for OUR. I think we almost hit 90000 bucks that we've raised so far and we've been able to donate. Uh, one of the uh, best things I've heard recently coming out of Operation Underground Railroad is they, this last year, they assisted in the adoption of, I think, 116, 120 kids, which is amazing, um, getting them out of 
uh, bad situations and, and into hopefully loving and caring homes. So awfully proud to be assisting in that in a little way. Uh, every time you subscribe or like this channel or become a paid member, um, all of that money goes to Operation Ego Railroad. So thank you for your support on that. Um, experimenting more and more with carving wood with power tools trying to figure out how to do it and um, I have to tell you Arbor Tech is the king I tried out a, a Merlin system and burned it out in a few hours that was last year but Arbor Tech has got it figured out for small carving needs <clears throat> small to medium, not not so much a Dremel size, but kind of the medium size, but not your bigger carving disc or, or chainsaw level. And I'll show you this here, how awesome it is. At first I tried this out with just my big drill, and it kind of worked, but drills are unwieldy, and they unfortunately cut into my walls because I was pivoting it, sweeping it back and forth, and that turned out to be a dumb idea. But getting it all softened up and weakened made it... A lot easier to use the Arbor Tech um, instrument you'll see here. Uh, and the combination of the two worked out really well. So I was actually quite happy with it. Um, basically, Arbor Tech takes a grinder and figures out different attaches, attachments for it. Not all of their things will go on it. on your average grinder. You have to buy their version for some of these things. But this little cylinder doesn't look like you're typical carving thing but it's got two carbide tips on it and it's just like a carbide tip that you would use for turning wood and it's the same concept they're spinning at a right angle to the, the wood and once you, once you get the speed ramped up um, it worked pretty well the thing I liked about it well above using a router or a roto zip or um, oh what else carving disc is you can go straight up and down and for this project specifically, I really needed that. It also has a stopper on there that you can adjust up and down to help control your height, or, or I'm sorry, your depth of hole. So my hat is off to Arbor Tech. They nailed it with this one. Good stuff. As always, um, I was donating my projects to Operation Underground Railroad by way of art for our.org it's a website i helped start with um, a team of awesome volunteers and we've got over a hundred artists who've donated things so far uh, i've been experimenting with auctioning off my pieces at least to begin with they don't always sell but um, right now i've only got one or two pieces that aren't that are available as of today which is January 10th 2023 this is for for sale at auction and there are bids on us so here within a week or so this this auction will end and that'll be your last chance to buy it but I got a couple of bids so far and it's going for a good price so I'm actually quite happy with it If you're unfamiliar with Operation Underground Railroad, they are an organization uh, based out of the United States that aids police police um, departments in the United States who are in need of dogs that can sniff out uh, child pornography uh, equipment, um, breaking up sex trafficking rings, and that it, outside the United States they often... Um, partner with you know the local police departments to help actually set up stings to help find kids who are being trafficked and I, I think they've stopped releasing the total number of kids they've helped but it's well over five or six thousand kids they've helped um, free from trafficking situations and they've helped arrest thousands of uh, perpetrators pedophiles whatever and uh yeah it's pretty awesome work 
pretty horrific problem, obviously, but um, it is a problem out there, and I'm I'm uh, so happy that there are organizations like them that are going after these people and making it harder for them to to uh, disrupt children's lives like that. So once again, this quick set UV resin was pretty awesome. It worked out reasonably well. I just wish, wish that it set a thicker layer of the resin. I expected the underside to be gooey and not set. That was fine. I just wanted the, um, the layer that did set to be about halfway down inside my window. And then I was planning all along to do a final pour with kind of a light blue to finish off the top layers and reinforce the other windows. Uh, but it just didn't set deep enough to capture the real beautiful gradient in blues that I was trying to get. So a little disappointed in that. If any of you out there are experts in UV setting resin that sets thick, and I'm talking like quarter inch plus, half inch, I would love to hear from you if you've got any recommendations. Um, it was kind of cool that this, uh, this little UV light, I would set it for 90 seconds and it worked pretty well. Now I did notice that the thicker the pigment, the less the resin would set up. But even on the really clear stuff, it still was a very thin layer that set, so it didn't make that much of a difference. One of the challenges with this part was to keep each window um, level. I didn't want the little windows that were setting up in there to be off of at a weird angle. So I got really frustrated with it being on the lathe and took it off, put it in this box filled with paper so I could situate it however I wanted. And that actually worked out really nicely. Plus I didn't make a mess on my lathe. You've probably noticed by now that my lathe has had the crap beat out of it. <laughs> I, I am not gentle with my tools. I push them to their limits and make a big mess with glue and resin and uh, not your typical professional YouTuber wood turner guy. It's all right. I like people to look around my garage shop and realize that uh, this is just a straight up amateur effort than uh, what the guy down the street might be working on, you know? So to make my mold, I think the best find I've found so far is this poly wall. It's um, a utility wall plastic sheeting. It's flexible yet rigid enough to hold up against the weight of sand or rice or whatever you're using. It, you know, you, you just super glue it right to the wood so it hugs the surface tightly. And the goal here is to waste as little resin as, as possible because it's such expensive stuff. Even though I'm being sponsored by Total Boat, which is an amazing sponsor, and they've they've donated so much resin to help this charitable project go forward, um, still like to conserve it so I can get push it as as far as I can. So this this has been the best thing I've come up with. It's the best way of creating a custom mold. Since my projects are always different shapes, I can never find bowls and things that fit it perfectly. So so you line it with that rigid plastic sheeting. Put it in three garbage bags in case you get a leak. Put it in my mm -hmm. pot that goes both in my vacuum chamber and my pressure pot. Fill it full of rice and that pushes the bag tight against the, the uh, plastic wall. And that way I get resin almost exactly where I want it. Um, we're using thick set fathom resin um, by Total Boat which allows you to go anywhere from two to four inches in depth or wall width, however you're looking at it. The, um, the, that, that depth can be pushed bigger if you keep it cooled well. And this is a, my favorite time of year to work in my garage because it's winter and it's about 50 degrees out there. And so the resin's still, it's not so cold that it won't set, but it's, it's cool enough that I can get away with murder and have it super deep and I don't get the bubbling and boiling and cracking that happens if you let it get too exothermic. On this project specifically, I only did it through the vacuum chamber just to encourage 
the resin to get into all the cracks and crevices and, and holes. And I did that on purpose because I noticed as I was using the quick set UV resin, it was leaving some bubbles and lots of irregularities, which was totally fine with me because I was going for the, uh, the stained glass look. And so I didn't want the top part to be perfectly clear and not match. And so I, I just did the vacuum chamber to help it set into the wood and left it a little bubbly, which, which was fine. Um, a lot of things I could improve on in this one, but in the end it looked, ended up looking like an ocean and I didn't mind the bubbles with how I textured it inside. It looks like you're uh, underwater looking up at ocean waves go by, something like that. One thing about doing these big pieces is um, whether you use the pressure pot or not or the vacuum chamber, the I usually do it upside down so I don't destroy my, my tenon. And so I'm trying to keep the tenon just barely above the level of the resin. And that's hard to do because at every stage the resin settles and it settles. And so I always keep a little extra in a little pot of the same color I'm using so that I can top it off. And so you got to check on it every few hours, at least at the beginning to make sure you don't end up with too low, too low a level of resin. The uh, other nice thing about this plastic wall sheeting is that uh, it's fairly soft. And when you turn it on the lathe, it turns off softer and easier than the actual resin. So it's no problem at all. And of course the plastic bag comes off no problem. You gotta watch it though. Sometimes you get little folds in the bag that fill with resin, and that can turn into a missile. <laughs> so sometimes I'll I'll take my hand grinder and cut off any loose pieces so that it's not dangerous. At the early stages, I usually use my um, carbide tip um, gouge just to ex excavate quickly through the garbage bag and the sheeting. But you got to be careful because it chips. Resin loves to chip like crazy, and if you if you're too aggressive with it, you'll get a deep, deep chip that you'll spend the whole time trying to get out, and then you'll ruin your project. So as soon as I get close to my windows, where I'm getting getting close to where I want it to be, I'll stop. And I use my smaller negative rake carbide tip uh, or a scraper or something that's pretty benign just so that I'm just taking out little bits um, so I don't get deep into one of my windows and ruin the whole effect. In the end, I did regret not putting it in the pressure pot because there were more bubbles than I expected. And on the external surface, I ended up not having too many defects. I was actually pretty happy with it, but yeah, yeah learning curve with this UV resin. I think uh, different brand is in order. 
some different experimentation, but yeah, it's definitely got a learning curve to it. I gave a presentation actually last night alongside my wife to our church group and uh, it was a retiree group empty nesters and um, the focus of the meeting was on creativity um, it was interesting I hadn't really thought about it too much before that uh, there's got to be a reason that some people, including myself, love to create. We love the process of coming up with a new idea and developing it, especially when it involves something beautiful, something based on nature. And uh, I think there's a creative bug deep inside all of us. And I think that's part of, it, part of being children of a Heavenly Father who is the ultimate creator um, of beauty and, and what have you. Anyway, it was an interesting meeting, easy, interesting topic. I think there are things like the creative process that uh, demonstrate that we are more like our Heavenly Father than, uh, than we might realize.
it was about this point that I realized that uh, the gummy underside of these windows it hadn't set up was mixing with uh, sawdust and it was going to be virtually impossible to just simply clean out even using alcohol and whatever cleaners and that so I decided to texture it and in this way I could get away with simply sanding it all out deeply and so I just went after every pocket with my uh, I forget the name of the stuff it's uh, King Arthur tools it's an inflatable ball and you put a, a sanding uh, cover around it which lets you get into corners and then using my file sander and honestly it left it with such a cool texture I just stopped I sanded it a little bit but I was so happy with the appearance from the outside that I just left it like that and I was really quite happy with the interest that makes that it gave kind of that stained glass feel old school windows that are kind of wavy and they're not super clear uh, and an abstract look at uh, at the ocean hence the name hidden seas Anyway, thank you so much for your support. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, got some good news coming up. I've got a partner that's going to join me in helping with this YouTube channel who's got a totally different take on wood turning and resin. So I'm really excited to see his projects and uh, to have a partner in crime here. So you guys have a great one. Happy New Year. And I'll see you on the flip side.